A human year is not the same as a dog year. You might have thought that dogs age seven times faster than we do, but it's not that simple. A dog that's been around for one year is, in fact, already 31. It will most likely even have its own little puppies running around. But here's where it gets tricky. Two human years don't necessarily mean that your dog is 62 either. Your buddy will need to be around four in our years before it reaches old age. A four-year-old dog will be 50, but a seven-year-old dog will be 62. And an eight-year-old dog will only be 64. So, they age faster, but also slower and slower as time passes by. The next time you're celebrating your best bud's birthday, be sure to put lots of candles on the cake and buy even more presents than you normally would. A common misconception is that dogs are colorblind. They're not, but they don't see color exactly as we do. They have trouble distinguishing between their reds and greens. It all just looks like a mash of gray, brown, blue, and even yellowy tones. That's because their eyes lack one of three photoreceptors needed to perceive colors fully. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Wrong! Because of their old age, they might need more persistence from you, but it's not impossible. The key here is to be as positive as you can. If you see they're not feeling up to it right now, that's okay. Let them rest, and in a little bit, you can pick the training session back up. Reward still needs to be a big part of the whole ordeal. After Max successfully speaks, give it its favorite biscuit. Then, it'll speak on command whenever you ask it to. That dog has shoes on. They might seem unnecessary, but today the weather's 90 degrees outside. Imagine walking with your bare feet on asphalt during this heat. You'd feel like you're stepping on lava, and so would your pup. Some dogs are better equipped to handle different weather conditions, but dog shoes can prevent your little buddy from harming its paws. It's the same during winter, when it's freezing cold. You wouldn't just walk around without a jacket on, so make sure your buddy is warm too. Dogs with a lot of fur don't need to get their hair cut to feel lighter. They have what's called an undercoat. In winter, it gets thicker, which gives your buddy an extra layer of protection from the cold. Then, during springtime, your dog will shed some of its fur. It's that same undercoat that will keep your dog comfy during hotter days. When you shave a dog's fur, the new one coming in might get curly or entangled. It might just be better to leave it as is. You can also find different alternatives to keep them cool. Keep it in the shade when they're out and always bring a bottle of cold water with you so your buddy's always refreshed. At home, you can put damp towels for them to lie on. If you have a garden, you can also turn its sprinklers on and let Max run free. It'll exercise and have lots of fun. Not all dogs are great swimmers, but all dogs love swimming. If yours can't swim all that well, it might be because it has a bulky chest and a large flat head. In fact, it might not even be able to stay afloat. Get it a swimming vest designed especially for dogs. Some people might say a slightly open window is enough to keep a dog in the car. This isn't true because after spending just a few minutes in a heated or cold car might mean severe health implications for your best friend. Some states even let you let a dog out of the car if you see it in there to let it breathe. If your dog can't stand mail carriers, it might be because it's trying to protect you. They bark because they're trying to alert you, their pack leader, that the vicious mail carrier is coming. You can fix this by introducing them to one another. This way, your dog will recognize them as a friend and not a villain. Unlike you, your dog isn't yawning because it's sleepy. Yawning is a way for them to show anxiety. If it doesn't like cats and there's one around, it could yawn. Or maybe there's a new person in the house and Max isn't feeling comfortable in their presence. Or you take your dog to a play date, but they're not getting along. Max keeps yawning because he's getting upset. Yawning is also a way to show you it's running out of patience. It might be time for both of you to leave. Dogs eat grass when they're sick, but this isn't always the case. Catching your dog eating grass when you've been talking to your friend for way longer than you should have probably means it's just bored. They do it to be rebellious too, or just because it's fun. It won't be a problem if the grass isn't treated. 
Either way, just make sure it doesn't eat too much of it. Otherwise, head out to the vet. Even a little bit of chocolate is poisonous for your pup and should be kept hidden away at all times. This includes cocoa powder and baker's chocolate. This applies to cats too. If you suspect that your pet has eaten a large amount of chocolate, take it to the vet's office immediately. Well-trained dogs will do what they're supposed to and obey commands, but don't think they'll never bite you. It can act out of emotion. Imagine your dog scared. You've put it in an uncomfortable situation with lots of new faces. This has been going on for a while, and Max isn't able to control his emotions anymore. So, a new person tries to reach it to give it a pet and gets punished. Nothing harsh, but it was unexpected. Maybe it felt like it needed to be defensive. Thinking they're protecting and guarding you is another reason why a dog might bite. Or if they're feeling too intimidated by whoever it might be. You've got two dogs and you're about to enter your house. One of them is waiting for you in its bed. It doesn't make a big whoop about it rather than wagging its tail. The other one comes running to the door. It whimpers, jumps, and wags its whole body while running in circles around you. This doesn't mean it loves you more. It just means it's not properly trained yet. Tail wagging doesn't always mean your dog is excited. You can observe a dog's tail to understand what it's feeling. If it holds its tail high but isn't moving it, it's alert but also trying to assert its leadership. Still held high, the tail is moving now. It means the feelings changed a bit. It's alert but happy. It's still trying to show it's the boss here. But at least it's feeling excited now. When its tail is between the legs, your dog's feeling afraid. Or if there's an alpha dog around, it might mean your buddy admits its leadership. A tail that's held straight out means the dog is taking in new information, feeling the room. It's not reacting though, it'll stay neutral while doing this. If a dog's tail is wagging fast, it means excitement. The faster they wag their tail, the more excited they are. A slow wag conveys insecurity. It might be because of another dog or person. Now, imagine your dog is wagging its entire body. You even see its hips wagging. This means it's friendly. It might happen when you're in the elevator, and it spots its best friend from the apartment complex. The worst wag of them all is an extremely fast vertical wagging tail. When doing this, your dog can be mean to others. It might be feeling territorial over you. It's best to remove yourself from the situation. If your dog's tail is wagging to the right, it means it's more relaxed. And a left wagging tail means stress. A farmer is working in the fields when all the sheep suddenly escape from their pen. They're scattering everywhere, far and wide. Surely the wolves are lurking nearby, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. One farmer can't possibly gather all those sheep, even on horseback. But one dog can. No, not a dog on horseback. The dog could outrun the sheep and herd them in. Dogs were domesticated between 14,000 and 29,000 years ago. Their initial purpose? To help us humans with day-to-day -day tasks we couldn't do ourselves. Eventually, we discovered that dogs of different sizes and skills can do certain jobs better. A German Shepherd would help, well, shepherds in Germany. Dobermans were used for security, since they come off as intimidating tough cookies. Or take other breeds, like terriers. They were bred to sniff out rats and other vermin in hard-to-reach places. Dogs were the original pest control before there was a 1-800 number you could call in a snap. Hey, thanks, Fido! Greyhounds are slick-looking racers and were bred for hunting. They could chase game up to 45 miles per hour, making them the fastest dog breed in the world. Good luck keeping this dog in an apartment! Mastiffs have been around since ancient Roman times. They were used to fend off lions and other large animals, making them the perfect watchdog for protection. They may seem vicious and scary, but they're actually gentle giants that love playing and lounging around. The St. Bernard is a big fluffy dog that can withstand frigid temperatures. They're used to locate lost mountain climbers and travelers stuck in snowstorms or avalanches. They're also known as the best couriers in the dog world and can pull a cart on their own. If you live in an icy land all year round, chances are you'd have a couple Siberian Huskies on your side. They're helpful for transportation and do well in a group. The people who live in such conditions use these dogs to pull their sleds from one place to another to this day. 
But then, you get some really, uh, let's say, unique-looking but still adorable doggos. I'm looking at you, Bull Terrier! These smooth-snouted canines are known to be pretty tough in the dog world. They thrive on human companionship and can't get enough playtime. Ah, and then there's pugs, our favorite bug-eye companions. Pugs have been around for hundreds of years in China as the perfect lap dogs. They're also known to be the clowns of the dog world. They were eventually introduced to Europe and went global from there. They became so popular that they appeared in paintings as far back as the 1700s. One of the oldest dog breeds ever, and the only one with a blue tongue, is the Chow Chow. Chows might look intimidating, but as it usually goes, they're super lovable cuties. If you're a cat person, this breed just might convert you. Chows love their alone time and are often compared to cats that way. They may not be super keen on making friends, but they're incredibly loyal companions. Experts believe these walking teddy bears originally came from Mongolia in northern China. And after many years, they slowly began moving south with nomadic tribes as hunting dogs. Like pugs, illustration of chow chows appeared on pottery and in paintings as far back as 2,000 years ago. When their popularity reached the rest of the world, the chow chow name just stuck. One of the first wolf dogs were hybrids between wolves and Pomeranians. Yup, those cute little accessory pooches are part wolf. But the Pomeranians of the 18th century were nothing like the ones today. They were tough, muscular working dogs that used to help shepherds with livestock and even plowing the field in snowy conditions. Terriers, greyhounds, mastiffs, pugs… Imagine any type of dog, and you'll see tons of variety. All those different canine shapes and breeds resulted from thousands of years of living with humans. Through selective breeding, dogs could be sort of customized over generations. You could call them GMOs, genetically modified organisms, but they did it the long way. You could make them taller, more muscular, with longer or shorter snouts. The list is endless, depending on the job. The environment also plays a role in canine evolution. One fossil study of ancient dogs in North America found that their bone structure changed with a cooling climate. They went from ambush pouncers in the jungle, sort of like cats, to long-distance runners chasing down their meal. In the end, we come to 190 recognized dog breeds in the US alone. The same can't be said about cats, which is only 42 breeds officially. Ah, the mysterious cat. So vicious in the cutest way possible. One second, it's purring and brushing up against your leg. The next, it's going straight for your hand, claws ablaze, because you pet Mr. Whiskers in the wrong spot. Yeah. Cats were domesticated roughly 10,000 years ago. But in typical independent cat fashion, they kind of domesticated themselves. They'd hang out near human settlements and hunt mice on farms. We humans like that. So we decided to take these cute little animals with us everywhere. Fast forward to today, and now we've got the perfect pet. You don't have to take them outside to go to the bathroom. They groom and entertain themselves. They even plot against you when you're sleeping. At least, I'm almost positive my cat does that. Dogs come in so many shapes and sizes. Many breeds don't even look like they're the same species of animal. With cats, you get some variety in size and coat patterns, but that's about it. The largest breed is the Maine Coon, which can weigh up to 20 pounds of pure fluff. These large kitties most likely came to North America on ships. Their job was to keep the mice population down during the journey. The Sphinx looks something like from a sci-fi movie or an ancient cat that's been around for centuries. I mean, the great Sphinx of Giza. Surely there's a connection. Nah, this hairless kitty has only been around since the 60s, and it was bred in Canada of all places. The Japanese bobtail looks like a mix between a cat and a rabbit. Their nubby little palm tail resembles a bunny's, and they even hop a little when running. That's because their hind legs are a bit longer than the front ones. They had a big job to do at first. History records suggest these cats were used to get rid of rodents that were causing a major problem for Japan's silk trade in the 1600s. The savanna looks like a cat you'd find in the jungles or rainforest, and you'd be half right. This kitty is a mix between a domestic cat and the serval, an actual wild African cat. These pointy-eared beauties are the tallest domestic cat breed and have unique cheetah-like spots. Actually, there are people out there who keep servals as pets. They're larger than any typical house cat and can cause a ruckus if they're cooped up in a closed environment for too long. It's not recommended to have one of these at home, since they're known for severely clawing couches and sofas. And you may want to pack up your curtains too, and pillows, and anything else. 
Ocelots are one of the most striking wildcats out there. You could easily compare them to servals since they rock those stripy waves and love clawing around. They can get as big as German Shepherds and come in many colors and patterns. But what makes ocelots strike out the most are their pointy ears and bushy beard. That and Salvador Dali famously kept one as a pet. Now, if I show you a jaguar and a leopard side by side, could you tell the difference? Here's a cheat sheet. Look closer at the spots. They both have those distinct black rosettes, but jaguars have little dots inside theirs. Leopards have no tiny dots in their spots. Also, just ask where each animal is from. Jaguars live in Central and South America. You'll only find leopards in Africa and parts of Asia. And to differentiate between a wildcat and a domesticated one, you'll need to look closer. Closer. Even more. That's it. Genes. Thanks to those, house cats have more control over their wild aggressive behavior. They're also better at creating memories. Over time, these genes were passed down from kitty to kitty until we were so fortunately gifted with the standard house cat. Wild cats also seem to have larger brains relative to their size and don't quite purr. Yeah, we all love a nice purr. But tell that to a lion. Lion and other wild cats usually vocalize by, yeah, roaring. This is because of the different throat structures in both felines. And a fun cat fact for the day. Cheetahs are the only cats, both big and small, that can't retract their claws. It's even in their scientific name. The genus Asaconix means no-move claw in Greek. And finally, it's time for no more talk from me. See ya! So, you have a new puppy. But the longer you're around him, the more you begin to wonder, is my dog weird? From licking the sofa to sniffing other dogs back there, your pet's behavior can leave you feeling a little confused. Let's look at some of the strangest things dogs do and figure out why they do them and if any of it is cause for concern. Why does my dog lick the furniture? You flop back down on the couch to watch a movie and find yourself sitting in a wet spot. No, Fido didn't have an accident. He's just been licking that exact spot for the last 20 minutes. The American Kennel Association says that in most cases, this isn't something to worry about. Often, a dog will lick furniture out of boredom. It's simply a way to pass the time when there's nothing else going on. The trick is to make sure your pet has plenty of toys and attention from you to keep it occupied. On the other hand, it might be licking furniture because of anxiety or stress. If there has been any significant change in its environment or routine, this can cause the animal to feel nervous and unsettled. Maybe your work schedule is different now, or someone new has moved into the house. The repetitive act of licking can be calming for a dog. As it adjusts, this should happen less often. If the licking is constant, aggressive, and hard to stop, a visit to the vet is in order. This may indicate a more serious issue. A professional can determine if there are any underlying health issues causing the behavior. The same is true when your dog constantly licks its paws. If it's a random occurrence, then there's little to worry about. But if it happens a lot, it may indicate pain or discomfort in that spot. Even if your pooch is otherwise healthy, too much licking can cause redness and soreness in the area. Why does my dog scratch the ground after going to the bathroom? Known as ground scratching, it's a very common thing to do for most canines. In fact, wolves and coyotes do it too. It helps to mark a dog's territory, letting others know that woof woof woof, which is dog for I was here. The scratching not only helps create a visual mark on the ground, but also releases pheromones from the special glands in its paws. Other dogs can smell and decipher these pheromones. And for you non-dog owners, those signs you put up to stop pooches from using your lawn as a bathroom? They don't work. Dogs can't read. My dog takes food from its bowl and eats it several feet away. That's not normal. Actually, it is. This is simply instinct kicking in. In the wild, dogs lived with other dogs in a group, or pack. When there was food, Less dominant animals had to work a lot harder to claim something to eat. It often meant grabbing some meat and quickly moving to a safer spot to finish their meal in peace. Your dog is just repeating the behavior of its canine ancestors. The other possibility is noise. 
Some dogs can be simply scared of the clanging of their collar against a metal bowl, for example. Try changing the bowl to a plastic one to see if it makes a difference. But my dog also eats grass. Is it not feeling well? This is a more complicated situation. First, don't panic. Lots of dogs do it. Some of them eat grass for the same reason you add fiber to your diet. It provides additional roughage to the digestive system, which helps it function properly. Like licking furniture, it can also be a way to fight boredom. If a dog has nothing else to do, grabbing and pulling at those green pokey things may be the only way to distract itself. But eating grass, even if normal, is problematic. You don't know what's on that grass. It can be anything, for example, herbicides and pesticides. They can be very bad for your dog's health. Distract your pooch when it tries to munch on grass with a verbal cue and a treat for reinforcement. The other strange thing my pooch does is roll in stinky piles on the ground. Ugh, it's gross! Well, it might be icky to you, but it's natural for your dog. One possibility is that dogs, and wolves and coyotes, do this to conceal their natural scent. They're covering themselves in an odor that can hide them from rivals or a potential meal. It's also possible that they do it to bring the scent back to their pack to communicate something that they found. It's like sharing your day with your friends, but through smell instead of words. What are zoomies? According to veterinarian Sarah Wooten, zoomies are defined as short periods of hyperactivity. You know, when your dog literally zooms around like crazy for a bit, then calms down and gets back to normal. The official term for this behavior is FRAP, frenetic random activity periods. But zoomies is a lot more fun to say. Dogs do this because of pent-up energy that just needs to come out. Maybe they've been alone all day or just had a bath. Now free, they want to celebrate. It's often a sign of a very happy pet. The only concern about zoomies is that Fido might bang into someone or something and get hurt. You can redirect him to a safer area if needed. Also, increasing the amount of exercise and mental stimulation your pooch gets throughout the day can reduce these moments of wild abandon. Okay, but why do dogs sniff each other back there? This is probably the behavior we're most familiar with. It seems strange when dogs do it with other dogs and embarrassing when they do it to your mother-in-law. But every dog does it. These animals can gather a lot of information through their nose. In fact, their sense of smell can be nearly 100,000 times better than ours because dogs have 150 million olfactory receptors in their nose. We only have 5 million. And 30% of a dog's brain is specifically dedicated to processing odors. Based on the smell, the dog can quickly determine everything from gender to mood to friendliness to health. It's almost like a superpower. I always let a strange dog sniff my hand first. Dog training company Eureka Dog Services says this is a terrible thing to do. It can actually make some dogs feel threatened. And no wonder. You just tower over them and shove your hand into their face. First, ask the owner for permission. If you get the okay, angle your body and face away from the animal at a 45 degree angle and smile. Then give the animal time to approach you. The dog may lean forward, keeping its back paws permanently planted. This is just in case you're dangerous. This way, it can quickly pull away from you if needed. My dog must like people. It's always asking for belly rubs. Although your dog might love getting scratches on his tum-tum, this behavior says more than you realize. When Fido does it for you, his owner, he's putting himself into a very vulnerable position. By doing so, he's saying he trusts you. But when a pooch does it to a stranger or an unfamiliar dog, it's an act of submission. It's basically saying that it isn't going to be a threat. This way, a dog is trying to avoid confrontation. As a pet owner, you'll be able to understand your dog's body language. This will help you determine if it is safe for a stranger to approach or if your dog would rather be left alone. One telltale sign is your dog's, well, tail. If your pet holds its tail in a natural position, such as loosely down by its legs, the animal is relaxed. If the tail is lifted and wagging, it's not necessarily a sign of happiness. It really means your dog is excited about something. A wagging tail that is held a little further back indicates a cautious curiosity. 
The dog is interested in something, but not yet sure if it's safe. And a tail tight between its legs? This is often a sign that your dog is scared or nervous. It's best to remove your pet from a potentially bad situation so it doesn't feel threatened. A big wag, often combined with a body wiggle, is when you really know you have a happy pet. My dog sometimes moves and barks in its sleep. Do dogs dream? Just like humans, Dogs do enter a phase of sleep called REM, or rapid eye movement. This is the time when it's believed people dream. During REM, your mind is processing the day's events. It's likely the same for your pet. So, when you see your dog's legs kicking as if it's running, that's probably what it's doing in its dream. And since you're such a big part of its life, it's probably even dreaming about you. A human year is not the same as a dog year. You might have thought that dogs age seven times faster than we do, but it's not that simple. A dog that's been around for one year is, in fact, already 31. It will most likely even have its own little puppies running around. But here's where it gets tricky. Two human years don't necessarily mean that your dog is 62 either. Your buddy will need to be around four in our years before it reaches old age. A four-year-old dog will be 50, but a seven-year-old dog will be 62. And an eight-year-old dog will only be 64. So, they age faster, but also slower and slower as time passes by. The next time you're celebrating your best bud's birthday, be sure to put lots of candles on the cake and buy even more presents than you normally would. A common misconception is that dogs are colorblind. They're not, but they don't see color exactly as we do. They have trouble distinguishing between their reds and greens. It all just looks like a mash of gray, brown, blue, and even yellowy tones. That's because their eyes lack one of three photoreceptors needed to perceive colors fully. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Wrong. Because of their old age, they might need more persistence from you, but it's not impossible. The key here is to be as positive as you can. If you see they're not feeling up to it right now, that's okay. Let them rest, and in a little bit, you can pick the training session back up. Reward still needs to be a big part of the whole ordeal. After Max successfully speaks, give it its favorite biscuit. Then, it'll speak on command whenever you ask it to. That dog has shoes on. They might seem unnecessary, but today the weather's 90 degrees outside. Imagine walking with your bare feet on asphalt during this heat. You'd feel like you're stepping on lava, and so would your pup. Some dogs are better equipped to handle different weather conditions, but dog shoes can prevent your little buddy from harming its paws. It's the same during winter, when it's freezing cold. You wouldn't just walk around without a jacket on, so make sure your buddy is warm too. Dogs with a lot of fur don't need to get their hair cut to feel lighter. They have what's called an undercoat. In winter, it gets thicker, which gives your buddy an extra layer of protection from the cold. Then, during springtime, your dog will shed some of its fur. It's that same undercoat that will keep your dog comfy during hotter days. When you shave a dog's fur, the new one coming in might get curly or entangled. It might just be better to leave it as is, You can also find different alternatives to keep them cool. Keep it in the shade when they're out and always bring a bottle of cold water with you so your buddy's always refreshed. At home, you can put damp towels for them to lie on. If you have a garden, you can also turn its sprinklers on and let Max run free. It'll exercise and have lots of fun. Not all dogs are great swimmers, but all dogs love swimming. If yours can't swim all that well, it might be because it has a bulky chest and a large flat head. In fact, it might not even be able to stay afloat. Get it a swimming vest designed especially for dogs. Some people might say a slightly open window is enough to keep a dog in the car. This isn't true because after spending just a few minutes in a heated or cold car might mean severe health implications for your best friend. Some states even let you let a dog out of the car if you see it in there, to let it breathe. If your dog can't stand mail carriers, it might be because it's trying to protect you. 
They bark because they're trying to alert you, their pack leader, that the vicious mail carrier is coming. You can fix this by introducing them to one another. This way, your dog will recognize them as a friend and not a villain. Unlike you, your dog isn't yawning because it's sleepy. Yawning is a way for them to show anxiety. If it doesn't like cats and there's one around, it could yawn. Or maybe there's a new person in the house and Max isn't feeling comfortable in their presence. Or you take your dog to a play date, but they're not getting along. Max keeps yawning because he's getting upset. Yawning is also a way to show you it's running out of patience. It might be time for both of you to leave. Dogs eat grass when they're sick, but this isn't always the case. Catching your dog eating grass when you've been talking to your friend for way longer than you should have probably means it's just bored. They do it to be rebellious too, or just because it's fun. It won't be a problem if the grass isn't treated. Either way, just make sure it doesn't eat too much of it. Otherwise, head out to the vet. Even a little bit of chocolate is poisonous for your pup and should be kept hidden away at all times. This includes cocoa powder and baker's chocolate. This applies to cats too. If you suspect that your pet has eaten a large amount of chocolate, take it to the vet's office immediately. Well-trained dogs will do what they're supposed to and obey commands, but don't think they'll never bite you. It can act out of emotion. Imagine your dog scared. You've put it in an uncomfortable situation with lots of new faces. This has been going on for a while and Max isn't able to control his emotions anymore. So, a new person tries to reach it to give it a pet and gets punished. Nothing harsh, but it was unexpected. Maybe it felt like it needed to be defensive. Thinking they're protecting and guarding you is another reason why a dog might bite. Or if they're feeling too intimidated by whoever it might be. You've got two dogs and you're about to enter your house. One of them is waiting for you in its bed. It doesn't make a big whoop about it rather than wagging its tail. The other one comes running to the door. It whimpers, jumps, and wags its whole body while running in circles around you. This doesn't mean it loves you more. It just means it's not properly trained yet. Tail wagging doesn't always mean your dog is excited. You can observe a dog's tail to understand what it's feeling. If it holds its tail high but isn't moving it, it's alert but also trying to assert its leadership. Still held high, the tail is moving now. It means the feelings changed a bit. It's alert but happy. It's still trying to show it's the boss here. But at least it's feeling excited now. When its tail is between the legs, your dog's feeling afraid. Or if there's an alpha dog around, it might mean your buddy admits its leadership. A tail that's held straight out means the dog is taking in new information, feeling the room. It's not reacting though, it'll stay neutral while doing this. If a dog's tail is wagging fast, it means excitement. The faster they wag their tail, the more excited they are. A slow wag conveys insecurity. It might be because of another dog or person. Now, imagine your dog is wagging its entire body. You even see its hips wagging. This means it's friendly. It might happen when you're in the elevator and it spots its best friend from the apartment complex. The worst wag of them all is an extremely fast vertical wagging tail. When doing this, your dog can be mean to others. It might be feeling territorial over you. It's best to remove yourself from the situation. If your dog's tail is wagging to the right, it means it's more relaxed. And a left wagging tail means stress.